Welcome in the Locked On Phillies. In today's episode, Rob Thompson is driving me insane with his decisions. And it's time we start questioning his ability to manage this team. The Phillies lose to the Pirates. We'll talk about it. We'll also preview their upcoming series with the Miami Marlins and why I think Christopher Sanchez might be cursed. All of that on today's episode of Locked On Phillies. You are Locked On Phillies, your daily Philadelphia Phillies podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, this is Locked On Phillies. I'm Connor Thomas, your host. Thank you so much for checking us out. Locked On Phillies, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You can hear me also on 97.5 The Fanatic on the radio, NBC Sports Philadelphia on the television. Uh, every once in a while for Bleacher Report as a content creator, I'm all over the place talking Phillies baseball. And right now, I'm kind of tired of it. Make sure you're rating, reviewing, subscribing to the YouTube. My goodness, what a bad loss for the Philadelphia Phillies against the Pittsburgh Pirates on Sunday. I mean, just an absolute terrible game from manager Rob Thompson. I don't know what more to say about what he put in on Sunday as far as being or trying to be the manager of the team. I'm going to say this up front and right out. I'm not calling for Rob Thompson's job. I'm not saying fire the man. Nothing like that, okay? We're in July. We're heading into August. There's still a ways to go. He's still the manager of a playoff team, all this stuff. So this is not – don't take this as – Rob Thompson needs to be fired. I don't mean it that way at all. I don't think that's prudent. Uh, I don't think this is the time for that. But here's what I'll say. He's not really making a great case for himself as the manager of this team right now. First of all, I talked about it in my previous episode, and you can go ahead and check that out where you get your podcasts on YouTube, all that good stuff. The lineup, I did not like the lineup sitting Bryson Stott, sitting Brandon Marsh, sitting JT Romito. I get sitting JT. He's a catcher. Sometimes he needs days off. And I responded to a tweet saying maybe they like Garrett Stubbs catching Christopher Sanchez, who is your starter for game three in Pittsburgh. Uh, maybe that's it. Maybe that's the rationale. I, I can't get too mad at that. But playing Josh Harrison at second and playing uh, like Yon Ross in the outfield and having a weird infield and everything like that. And I like Yon Ross, but man, it, it, Marsh, Stott. Play these guys. I don't care if it's a lefty. It's 43-year-old Rich Hill. It's not exactly like he's throwing 99 sidearm that these guys can't pick up. Bryson Stott's good enough against lefties. Brandon Marsh needs to be tried more against lefties, and he's been having a good season. I just I don't see why those guys would not be in the lineup besides the 17 games and 17-day stretch that I keep talking about. But we're only two games into that. They had an off day on Thursday. I don't know why these guys would need rest right now, but Rob Thompson felt they needed it. So that was the pregame stuff. And then we get into the end game. <sighs> Christopher Sanchez, an outstanding start. He goes five innings of no hit ball, 73 pitches, and he's lifted from that game. That's an abysmal decision. It reminds me of the Zach Wheeler pulling in the World Series uh, from this past year against the Astros when Jose Alvarado came in and gave up a bomb to Jordan Alvarez that ended up costing you the final game of the World Series. Now, Rob Thompson said post game that Christopher Sanchez's stomach was bothering him. I don't know. He looked all right to me. He was throwing no hit ball. What he came out and all of a sudden had a tummy ache. Like maybe it's a cover up. Maybe there's legitimacy to it. I, I don't know. I don't really care. Like there's no real excuse unless there's a major injury to a player. Be like, okay, man, I get you're not feeling your best. Go back out there. Pulling him there. Maybe I'm being too critical of Rob Thompson. There actually was something wrong with Christopher Sanchez. But I think in basically any circumstance, pulling a pitcher that has only thrown 73 pitches, that is no hitting the opposing team, is just – it's an impossible call to make as a manager. You cannot do that. And then Sir Anthony Dominguez comes in, gives up a two-run home run promptly, and the game is tied, and then the Phillies try and bounce back, and they can't come back enough because the bullpen is just just didn't get the job done. And I get it. The bullpen did not make Rob Thompson or they did not do Rob Thompson any favors, I should say. But the bullpen shouldn't have been out there like you wouldn't. I don't get how you can lift a guy throwing a no hitter through five innings. That makes no sense. It's not it's not April. OK, it's not May. This is not the start of the season. Christopher Sanchez has made many starts to this team. He's stretched out. He has the ability to go longer. It was just a terrible, terrible decision by Rob Thompson. And then the base running like this is on Thompson. 
Fix the base running with your team. I don't care if you're in charge of the base running or not. You're in charge of this team as the manager. And in extra innings with runners on second and third and two outs, or two outs, sorry, second and third and less than two outs, I should say, fly balls hit to the outfield. Bryce Harper on third does not tag. No idea why he would not be tagging there. That might be Dusty Wathen. That might have been Harper's call because he could see the play in front of him. Either way, terrible decision because you are the go-ahead run. you got to go ahead and try and score there. And Alec Bohm, the play is entirely in front of you. Bryce Harper standing on third base, basically, and you run from second three-quarters away, then get thrown behind, then Bryce Harper makes the decision to get thrown out at home. Like, I'd rather have you at third than Alec Bohm at second. <sighs> the base running with this team is unbelievable. The type of baseball they play is just flat out terrible. Like, they're a good team, but the mentality that they play the game with is just not to the level that professionals should play it with. It was an embarrassing loss. I talked to some people who were out there in Pittsburgh, and they're like, we were embarrassed to be in the stands today. And you should have been. The Phillies put together an embarrassing performance, and it starts with the manager. He needs to get his act together. Figure out how to set more competitive lineups without resting multiple starters on the same day. Figure out how to get the base running figured out. Figure out how the defense plays best. Now, he did insert Brandon Marsh as a pinch runner for Kyle Schwarber late in this one. So I guess he learned from his mistake earlier in the week where he didn't put uh, Brandon Marsh out there as a defensive replacement for Kyle Schwarber. But still, you got to figure that out. And also, learn how to manage starting pitching in the bullpen. He's been really iffy with that his whole tenure as Philadelphia Phillies manager. And it's been very noticeable this year. As a manager, you cannot be costing your team games. Today, Rob Thompson cost the Philadelphia Phillies a chance to win. Uh, I sent a tweet out, and it's getting a lot of responses, that I'm ready to have the conversation about Rob Thompson's ability to manage this team. I, again, not calling for the guy's job, not saying he should be fired, but I'm saying that conversation about his ability to be the manager is definitely on the table. I don't know how the season ends for the Philadelphia Phillies. If they make the playoffs in another deep run, we're going to forget about all of this. But if it's a third wild card spot and they get quickly bounced from the playoffs, if it's potentially missing the playoffs, which I still don't think is on the table, but I mean, who knows with the way they play rough baseball at times. Rob Thompson's going to have to answer some tough, uh, tough questions, and Dave Dombrowski and John Middleton are going to have to make some tough decisions about the manager of this team. Uh, I... I really don't know how it's possible that you make this many bad decisions in a week. He's cost them two games this week, and managers are supposedly only supposed to affect the outcome, I don't know, five, six games a year. Well, this is not a good week for Rob Thompson, and it's a bad time to start having a bad stretch with all these games in a row and no days off and no time to recollect yourself. You're heading into Miami to play a team that's in your division and in the wild card race, and then it's played you well, and you don't play well at their place, and it's going to be – a, a tough series out there in Miami against the Marlins and the Phillies are not firing on all cylinders whatsoever. Now, first pitch of the game Monday night, 6 40 PM Eastern standard time between the Phillies and the Marlins. You can listen to every pitch of the Phillies hometown radio broadcast of that game on the Sirius XM app. Just go to the SXM app and search Phillies. I'm going to preview that series coming up and talk about the importance of it. But uh, Rob Thompson is driving me insane. This team's base running is driving me insane. They just find ways to make mind-numbingly bad mistakes out there. And they're still a talented baseball team, which is what's even more frustrating. Like, they're better than this. But right now, they're not playing like they're better than this. And that's driving me insane. So Rob Thompson is going to have to figure some stuff out if he wants to start helping this team win ball games. Coming up, again, we'll preview Phillies-Marlins. We'll talk about game one Monday night and uh, discuss how the Phillies bounce back because they're going to have to. It was a very bad loss, though, to end the series in Pittsburgh with a series loss to the Pirates. We'll talk more coming up as we continue Locked on Phillies. First, though, let me tell you about my friends over at FanDuel, right? Take your first swing at betting MLB on FanDuel, and you could get 10 times your first bet amount in bonus bets. That's up to $200 they'll let you get on that. That's right. You bet 20 bucks, and you'll land $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. Doesn't matter if you bet the Phil's money line today. If you had lost that, you still would have gotten $200 if you had made a $20 bet. That's $200 you could spend betting everything from the money line to the over-under to who you think is going to hit the first home run. All that good stuff. And it's all on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. FanDuel is the only app I'll use to bet on sports. I love it. It's a super easy interface. They pay you out securely and quickly. It's a great way to to bet your money, and it's a great time to bet your money on Major League Baseball when you win. Like I said, you can get paid instantly. Who doesn't want their money in a snap? 
Well, FanDuel does that for you. And that's why there's no better place to bet on MLB than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So sign up today and visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and you get up to $200 in bonus bets. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball. All right, let's start this series preview against the Miami Marlins. Uh, Phillies Marlins, 6.40 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can listen to every pitch of the Phillies hometown radio broadcast of that game on the SiriusXM app. Just go to the SXM app and search Phillies. Now, the Phillies are favored again in their next game. There, You've got a 52.1% chance, according to ESPN Analytics, to beat the Marlins Monday night. Tywin Walker is going to take the mound against Edward Cabrera. Now, here's the matchup numbers-wise. Walker, 11-4, and a really good win-loss record. Uh, 406 ERA on 127 whip. Cabrera is 5-6 and six on the year with a 474 ERA and a 142 whip. So the pitching matchup favors the Philadelphia Phillies. As far as strikeouts, though, Edward Cabrera is a strikeout monster. He's got 90 strikeouts and 74 innings pitched. He also has 46 walks and 74 innings pitched, though. So he's a guy that's going to have good stuff, but the command can be a question at times. He's only given up 10 home runs in those 74 innings, which, I mean, it's one per about every seven innings. But still, it's not as bad as some people, <clears throat> Aaron Nola. But uh, it's a guy that you're going to have to try and avoid the strikeout against. And the Philadelphia Phillies, they have a penchant for being a team that you can strike out. So they're going to have to come with their best stuff. Looking at the leaders for the teams right now, when you're looking at batting-wise, Kyle Schwarber's leading the Phillies with 27 homers. He hit one in Pittsburgh in that series. Could use another couple in this set with Miami. Jorge Soler has 24 home runs to lead the Marlins. Bryce stop batting 306 is leading the Phillies. And Luis Arise, he's batting 377. He's basically a shoe in to win the National League batting title. He's unbelievable. We know how good he is. An all-star this year at second base for the Miami Marlins. As far as RBIs are concerned, Kyle Schwarber has 65 to lead the Phillies. And Brian De La Cruz leads the Marlins. He's only got 57. So the Phillies offense, better than what the Miami Marlins has put together. But the Marlins have played pretty well against the Philadelphia Phillies so far this year, especially down there in Miami. Uh, you remember the series to uh, end the first half there in Miami where the Marlins took two or three against the Philadelphia Phillies. It'd be nice for the Phillies to, uh, to get back after them. The Marlins today uh, took the lead over the Philadelphia Phillies in the standings. They're a half game up. They're 57 and 49. The Phillies are 56 and 49. So a half game lead. When you look at the wild card, the Phillies are now currently out of a playoff spot. The Brewers, Marlins, Giants, all in wild card spots. The Phillies on the outside looking in if the season ended today. Listen, if they go on a bad stretch, I told you in our last episode, they could find themselves in trouble. So they need to get things going quickly. And there's a lot of stuff that needs to go right for the Philadelphia Phillies. I mean, just looking at the series ender in Pittsburgh against the Pirates and the folks who perform and the folks who didn't, uh, walk-off home run, by the way, for the Pirates and went to 6-4. to four. I didn't really get into the details of that. But uh, as far as the numbers, I mean, Nick Castellanos won for five. It was nice that he got a hit, but he's still down to 273. Uh, Alec Bohm had a nice day, three for five with a two-run home run. That's nice to see. Trey Turner had a hit. Okay, good. Maybe he's coming out of it. But <sighs> Bryce Harper, one for two, not bad. He had three walks. They're just working around him. Guys just – at the bottom of the order, didn't have Josh Harrison over three, Garrett Stubbs over three, Edmundo Sosa one for five. That's why you need to play the starters. Those guys are just not everyday players at the major league level. And I get the Stubbs thing again because catchers need rest every once in a while, but you need Stott, Marsh, Romuto to come into this lineup on Monday night and take care of business and help this team out. And you need Trey Turner and Nick Castellanos to continue to try and pull out of their slump. I mean, both having hits on the day on Sunday is nice to have, but still need more out of those guys. They're more talented than just one hit every other game. So those are the guys to focus on. Also, the bullpen was kind of rough on Sunday. They've been really good as of late. Would like to see a nice bounce back performance for them Monday night against the Miami Marlins. But you got Tywin Walker on the mound, and he's been a pretty good innings eater at points this year. So hopefully you can get him into the sixth or seventh inning, and you just have to go like Soto, Kimbrell, something like that. I'll tell you what. I can't wait to have Jose Alvarado back on this team because the Phillies could absolutely use him, especially on days that Aaron Nola pitches or Rob Thompson decides to pull Christopher Sanchez after five innings. Like That would be helpful to have another great arm in the bullpen. And the pressure is mounting on Dave Dombrowski to make big moves at the trade deadline because he just he needs to improve this roster. He shouldn't have to, right? Looking at this roster, they should be talented enough. And that doesn't mean even if they were playing well, he wouldn't add. I'm just saying, like, on paper, there shouldn't be as many glaring holes with this team as it seems that there are right now. But 
the way they're playing, these trade deadline acquisitions are going to be super important. And I need Dave Dombrowski to start getting a little bit more aggressive. I said just in the last episode, patience is a virtue. So I'm going to try and take my own advice there. But yeah, the trade deadline is looking more and more important with every game the Philadelphia Phillies lose. They have one more game to play before the Tuesday trade deadline. And uh, hopefully by the time they take the field Monday, Dave Dombrowski will have made a move. But even if not, you're going to have to get something done at some point Monday and Tuesday to uh, make things work as far as a little boost to this roster. They could really, really use a big acquisition right now. And I don't know if a big acquisition is coming, but they could certainly use it. Now, just looking at the schedule for Phillies Marlins, again, one more time, 6.40 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is the first pitch for Game 1. Phillies Marlins, you can listen to every pitch of the Phillies hometown radio broadcast of that game on the SiriusXM app. Just go to the SXM app and search Phillies. It's a four-game set. The Phillies' first three games of August are in Miami. Ranger Suarez will pitch Game 2. Game three is going to be Zach Wheeler. And then game four is our boy, Mr. Inconsistent, Aaron Nola, down there in Miami. He's probably due for one of those like eight inning three hit games, but I don't have any confidence in that at this point. But I mean, you have your guys going, like you have good pitchers throwing. And the way this uh, starting rotation has been outside of Nola, basically everybody's been throwing pretty darn well. So you have an opportunity to win the series. Now you need three of four against Miami. Two of two, or sorry, two of four. It's not awful, but three of four would be huge considering how you just dropped two of three in Pittsburgh. Uh, the pressure is mounting on the Philadelphia Phillies the deeper we get into the season. As you move towards August, you're really going to separate the teams who deserve to be in the playoffs from the teams that don't. The past couple games, the Philadelphia Phillies are not playing like a team that deserves to be in the playoffs, even though I still firmly believe their roster is one that lends to a playoff appearance and hopefully a deep playoff run. But we'll have to see. It's just not a good time right now for the Phillies. And I thought they were pulling out of it when they went on their little three-game uh, win streak. I, I don't know. This team drives me insane sometimes. Speaking of getting driven insane by the Philadelphia Phillies, Christopher Sanchez has to be going absolutely crazy at this point. I think he's cursed. We're going to talk about some of Sanchez's bad luck coming up as we wrap up today's episode of Locked on Phillies. Yeah, Christopher Sanchez I think is cursed. I mean, this guy, I don't know any other way to put it. He puts out good starts basically every single time out there. I mean, another great one today. He's got a great-looking ERA, great-looking whip. Uh, he keeps the ball down. He induces double plays. He doesn't walk a lot of guys. Like He's just a, been a very, very solid pitcher for the Philadelphia Phillies this season, and he still has no win to show for it. He doesn't get run support. The Phillies start scoring as soon as he's out of the game. I don't understand it whatsoever. It's just one of those weird things, right? It used to happen to the, the guy I think about is Jacob DeGrom when he was with the New York Mets. He'd throw like six innings of shutout ball and the Mets wouldn't score and then the bullpen would give up two and he'd lose. And I don't mind seeing the Mets lose, but Christopher Sanchez has had that type of luck this year. I don't know what he's done to the baseball gods and I don't know what he can do to help himself out, but I just I need to give props to Christopher Sanchez because he give, he deserves so much better than what this team is able to provide for him as far as defensive support, run support, anything at this point when he makes starts. Uh, sure, he could be your fifth starter continually. And the more starts he throws, the more I think that starting pitcher is less important than adding another right-handed bat and someone who could play the outfield, uh, a guy that's a more veteran player. But I'm still going starting pitching because I don't think Aaron Nola has been consistent enough and you need more options. But, man, Christopher Sanchez really, really deserves props. Over the past month, you could argue he's been the best pitcher for the Philadelphia Phillies, and he's a guy that wasn't even on the roster opening day this year. It just kills me to see a guy throwing so well and having so many things that he does well for this team not be rewarded for it over and over and over again. And I wonder how much mentally it's wearing on him. Like I wonder what his mentality is. Mentally strong pitchers, and he seems like it. Like He seems unflappable. He's very calm, cool demeanor, Ranger Suarez-esque. But game after game after game, just not having backup from your team, I wonder what's going through his head right now. And I just uh, – I want Christopher Sanchez to know, and I want the fan base to know, he's been doing his job, and he deserves a lot of support, and he deserves support from his team. But I just think he needs to continually be recognized, even though he's not being recognized on the stat sheet with wins and the team isn't winning starts that he makes – uh, he it's not his fault. It's kind of an insane stretch. And if he continues this, uh, the Phillies are going to be fine once they start playing better baseball. But 
uh, that would annoy me if I was pitching in his spot. I wouldn't vocalize it, and I don't think he will, but deep in the recesses of my mind, I'd be like, come on, guys. What do I have to do to get you guys to give me some run support or some defensive support or not make bad managerial decisions or not run into outs on the base pass and cost this game? It's like, I don't know what more I can do to help this team win. So tough mental time for the Philadelphia Phillies right now. Tough mental time for the Philadelphia Phillies fan base right now. But, hey, 17 games in 17 days. I've been saying it a bunch. Treadmill keeps moving. You got to keep rolling. And they got another chance against the Marlins Monday night. So hopefully it's a really good series down in Miami and you can build momentum going into some easier series following that one. So that's my take on the going on goings on with the Philadelphia Phillies this weekend. That's all for today's episode of Lock on Phillies. Thank you so much for checking us out. Make sure you're rating, reviewing, subscribing to the YouTube Locked on Phillies on YouTube. Uh, and I will talk to you next time on the next episode of Locked on Phillies.